Hello there, welcome back to Broken Age. We've just got a couple of things left to do for Shay's solo part of Act 2. So, what else does your ship need to fly? Hmm, let me see here. Still need an electronics genius, and uh, I still need a radiation suit. Hmm, once we take care of that, we'll be ready to fly. On it. Okay, see you later. Okay. All right, we'll get uh, to the radiation suit next. Now, this one uh, was quite a tricky one for me when I played this through for the first time. Uh, I think I can remember the vague order that we do things in this time, so hopefully this should go fairly smoothly. But it does involve a lot of conversation uh, with various people. So, the first person that we need to talk to is Twyla. And if you can't remember who that is, she was the sulky kind of emo girl who, in up in Skyloft, um, no, Merryloft. Skyloft is from Zelda Skyward Sword. <laughs> uh, Merryloft. Up in Merryloft, we will find that girl. If you remember, she was kind of sat on a, uh, like on a swing, away from everyone else, sulking because she hadn't been picked by Mog Chothra. And she was a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest, but nonetheless, uh, we need to validate her existence in this game right about now by um, actually involving her in the story. <laughs> so we're going to go all the way up here to Merryloft. And of course we've already been up here when we were disgracing Harmony Lightbeard, um, but... I think she's down a ladder just over here. Just down here, I think. Yeah, here we go. And you can see Harmony is in the cage here. And also, she Twyla is now talking to uh, Vela's mother. Which is quite an interesting crossover, but there we go. <coughs> What's Harmony doing in that cage? Heather carried him down here and stuffed him in. Told us not to let him out. Said he was getting rid of some trash the town didn't need anymore. I'm sure he'll let him back out eventually. Or maybe a big monster will come and eat him. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to this place? Haven't you ever been to the Maiden's Feast? Yes and no. Which is it? No one should ever have to go to a Maiden's Feast. And no one ever will again, if I can have anything to do with it. I'm cool with that. What exactly is a Maiden's Feast? Something we've always had to do. So we were told, and we believed it. We thought it a great honor. We were so happy for Vela. So proud of her. So foolish. So, Maiden's Feasts are bad then? My daughter taught us that when she fought the monster. You see, it didn't destroy the town. It just ran away. She was right the whole time, all those years. All those girls. For nothing. I'm not sure if you want to hear this, Morelia, but you're actually cheering me up right now. Is there anything I can do to help? I just want to find my daughter. To beg her forgiveness and tell her how proud of her I am. Please, please be my mother. What were you guys talking about when I walked up? I was just trying to cheer up this young lady here. But she's just starting to realize what a loser I am. You are not. Then why didn't Mog Chothra pick me? Well, uh, I'm not sure, honey. I can't think of any reason that sounds sane. Um, who are you again? My name is Shay. I'm not from here. Listen, Twyla. It's time to move on. And do what? 
The Maiden's Feast is the only thing I've prepared for all my life. Well, I'm sure you're good at lots of other things. Like, uh, let me think. Not getting chosen for things? That's just mean. Fixing spaceships? No, we don't have many of those around here. Swinging? You making fun of me? Algebra. Nope. Not part of Maiden's training. Well, at least your costume is cool. Oh, thanks. Made it myself. You made that stunning dress by yourself? That's amazing, Twyla. Meh. That lot of good it did me. Do you think you could make me a costume? Huh? Oh, I think that would be a great thing for you to do, Twyla. Well, maybe if you had a pattern and some material, maybe I could whip something up. Okay, I'll get a pattern and the material and be right back. <gasps> oh, exciting. Right, okay, enough of this banter. So, some interesting things there. Mm -hmm. This girl is starting to get some sort of understanding of her position in this world and also some sort of purpose as a character which is quite a nice um, kind of arc for her to have. Also Vela's mother was finally starting to understand what a terrible terrible thing it was to have sacrificed her daughter to that beast. Um, so this game does have, as I've mentioned earlier on, does have very important messages about religious fervor and that kind of thing and how that kind of shit is really really unhealthy for people and causes an enormous amount of pain and emotional distress and people generally don't realize the uh, problems that that causes until it's too late so uh, definitely food for thought there guys <laughs> anyway we have the pattern she wants pattern and material to build a radiation suit what we do have is a baby radiation suit right so we can give that to her as a pattern so can you make me one of those oh that's Adorable. How old is your baby? Oh, it's for me. I need it a little bigger. Well, I suppose I could use this for a reference. There's my can-do gal. Just get me the material you want for your giant baby onesie and we're good to go. It's not a... Oh, never mind. Be right back with the material. Okay, cool. <laughs> so that's one half done, right? So the next thing we need to do is get material. And the place that we are going to get that is from those two people who look like they're from Loom. Do you know, remember the mad cultist people who th uh, were worshipping Alex's cave? I think they're actually up here by the peach tree. I know that they're by the peach tree, I just can't remember where that is. I think it's over this side. Over here. We'll return in time. Here we go. Just need to avoid the holes. Hi, I like your robes. Who told you to ask about our robes? Don't say anything, Dawn. If you give me back those robes, I promise Alex won't press charges. First of all, we didn't steal anything. Secondly, we're naked under here, so no way you're getting our robes. If you want them, you're gonna have to fight us for them. I'll fight you for those robes no problem. I need them to help my mom. Oh, that's so sweet. He wants to help his mother. And he's willing to beat us up with a stick to do it. No, I'm not going to beat anybody up. But I will easily disarm the both of you. I've completed several fencing missions with my yarn pals. So if you have another stick handy... We don't have any fencing sticks handy, Mr. Fancy. But if you find one, feel free to come back and try to take our robes from us. I'll be back. Yeah, that's what the dead eye god said. Up from a hidden. Fair play. All right, well, there's no point well, exhausting all that needless dialogue. We know what we need to do, right? Oh. We need to get a rod Are we speaking as us or, or stick in order to fight them for their robes. The robes is going to provide the material that we need. Uh, what we can do is go back over here and down to the very far right hand side of Meriloft, where we will encounter. Another couple of familiar faces. Maybe I should. 
He keeps saying that stuff, by the way, uh, because he's sinking, as you can see, into the cloud. We need to be stood on the wooden parts. So here's Rocky, Vela's si little sister, and um, McGee. They've got red Hi, I'm Shay. Want a cupcake, Shay? I want a cupcake. Great. Got any money? No, but I support your cause. That's great, but we need funds to pay for printing, distribution, baking, frosting. Come back when you get some real cash, okay? Where are your parents? Well, my dad is in my mom's cloud shoe hut, getting parenting lessons from Rocky's old man. And my mom's trying to cheer up another victim of the meet and speech we met. A girl my sister's age. And I'm not supposed to tell anyone where my mom is, but I know. Let's just say she's catching dinner. What's the special cause? We're raising money for an awareness campaign about her missing sister. And about the lies of the meat and fee system. Yeah, cupcakes against lies. What exactly are the lies of the Maiden's Feast system? They told us that we had to offer Maidens as a sacrifice to save our village. And we just went along with it because that's how it's always been done. Yeah, us too. But we were all lied to. Yes, yes, we were. See, Rocky? I told you it'd be easy to convince people. <laughs> that's pretty clever. I like that. Again, this uh, does have a nice libertarian uh, sort of stance on things like, um, you know, indoctrination as well. Uh, like, uh, believing something just because you've been told it's true without really thinking about whether it is true or not. And then they also kind of parody that one step further by um, kind of doing the same thing to him. Anyway. Well, bye. Good luck with the bake sale. Missing persons awareness campaign and revolution by way of cupcakes. That's what I said. So we need a cupcake. So we'll go over here, where uh, Vela's grandfather and this little fella is. Can't remember his name. Okay, old man. This time you're going down. How'd you do that? I think this guy's called Walter, is he? No, no, that's his dad. What's his name again? Oh yeah, it's like Chut or Chut. Anyway. Say there. Do you guys know any place around here to get some money? Oh, I have lots of money. My dad says it's important to give it away. You want some? Well, just enough to buy a cupcake. Here you go. Thanks. Why do you have so much? Whoa, Pops gives it to me to give to Harmony. But I know Harmony likes to stay light, so I keep most of it myself to lighten his burden. That'll never hold up in court. Somehow, I think you're going to end up the hero of your family. <laughs> I know, because I'm a warrior. <laughs> Fair dues, he's an enterprising little fella. Do you really need that cane? You seem pretty light on your feet. Well, I do seem to have a lot more get up and go now that Vela's inspired me. Seeing her kick that fog red in its soft bits really put the fight back in my bones. Well, I still need the cane. It's where I keep my frosting. Okay, back to your lessons. On your feet, soldier! I am! Oh. Right, so, clues there. So this is the cane that we need to fight um, Deadeye and Thingy. But we can't get it because it's where he keeps his frosting. So the cupcake is the key here, right? And I never thought I would say that ever <laughs> when talking about hey, anything, let alone video cupcake? games. But How's the campaign going? It's building cup by cup. Well, bye. Good luck with the bake sale. Missing persons. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so we'll give them the coin. Hey, can I buy one of those cupcakes? I got money. Great. I will take that money. 
Here's your cupcake. The red frosting is special. It was her favorite kind. Well, actually, it's my favorite kind. But I never let her have any before. And now she's gone, so now I wish I could. Hey, Rocky, it's okay. We're going to find her. You know, she's probably out beating up some poor Mog right now. That is most definitely true. Uh, thanks for the cupcake. Oh, that's melted my heart. <laughs> poor Rocky. It's funny how that's like the funniest thing in the introduction to Vela's part of the story is how Rocky is like dizzy on the sugar from all the cupcakes she's been ramming down her throat. And then later on in the game, it actually pulls that whole joke back round and makes it something that's genuinely meaningful. Uh, that's quite nice. Anyway, uh, this guy with the bird's nest round his neck is Walt Er, And we need to give the cupcake to him, if I remember rightly. Anybody want a cupcake? Oh, thanks, but I can't. Something about eating my daughter's face. Ah, oh, Husker. That's the best part. In fact, that's the only part I eat. I'm off gluten, you know. Okay, and now, if you haven't already worked this out, what we are left with is a cupcake with no frosting. So we need to go to, back to Grandpa and get him to frost it with his special frosting cane. Uh-oh. Hey, hey. Quickly. You want to buy a cupcake? I got you now! Oh. Hey, want to frost this? Why'd I go and do that? Now I don't have any frosting left to make a cupcake for Bella. You can give her this one. Oh, hey! Good idea! Here, you can take my empty. See if you can get it refilled, okay? Okay. Okay, we are getting somewhere. All we need to do now is take this cane back to the weirdos and fight them with it. Which is, uh... Again, something I never thought I would say in a video game, but there we are. So, back to the peach tree. There's Big Bird. Oh, Big Bird. Here we go. I do love these two. It's a shame about this. Okay, yarn boy. Enough is enough. <sighs> You're lucky she's blind, kid. I didn't miss him because I'm blind, Courtney. I missed him because... I can see. I've been... I've been pretending to be blind all these years. <gasps> I never really had the faith like you, Courtney. But I don't have the faith, Dawn. I was pretending too, so I could be like you. What? You're not blind? No. In fact, I've been stealing and selling artifacts from the pyramid to save up money to get out of this town. M me too! I would have left long ago, but I didn't want to leave you here. I know how much being a dead-eyed druid meant to you. I haven't wanted to be a druid for years. I want to go to school and study hotel management. I want to study graphic design and start a band. Let's do it. Let's just go. Right now? Right now. But what about our quest to find something to believe in? I did. How about you? That's what I get for learning defense with candy canes. Absolutely freaking bonkers. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that. Imagine describing that to someone who hadn't just watched that happen. 
So the two uh, crazy zealot, religious zealot girls decide that they um, actually never really had faith in whatever it is they were pretending to believe in. Then they sink through a cloud, leaving their robes behind, kind of like when Obi-Wan Kenobi dies at the end of A New Hope. Then the two naked girls get caught by a bird with a bird's nest on its back and a kind of barbershop quartet hat and they high five while flying away into the sunset. Yeah, pretty normal stuff Better really, isn't it? These before those druids get cold and come back. Anyway, enough of this. We have got the material we need to get Twyla to make our radiation suit. So down we go. Uh but again, I know this is this may be reading far too much into this game, which is simply a, a really heartwarming story, but I do kind of get distinct vibes of like anti-religion and things like that in this game, and, and it comes from those kind of themes of like people shedding the skin of the, the um, kind of theological fervor that they found themselves in and they've been conditioned into for for as long as they can remember. People, when they've realized they didn't really know what they were doing, um, then they set about doing the opposite. And that's like, you know, maybe I'm just sort of uh, pressing this thing into the into a shape which it which it never really meant to be in, but it, it is it is a pretty powerful idea really. And it's an idea which is kind of um explored multiple times throughout the story of this game. Huh. Oh, never seen this kind of material before. Can you sew it? Shouldn't be a problem. That's the spirit. Well, only one thing to do now. Twyla! Don't worry! I'll be right back! Come on, Vera! Oh, Oh, I thought my denator was dramatic. <laughs> Great! But what's with all the feathers? Just because I was working off a pattern doesn't mean I can't inject a little personal style, does it? Dear, you are an incredible talent. Alright, nice one. We are done. What we'll do is just very quickly turn this into Alex, seeing as how we have to go all the way back there anyway. Might as well just do this as quickly as we possibly can here. Uh, down the ladder into Curtis's house. Who should still uh, be using his resin mould. He is. Out of his house past the tree. We're, which now has the singing trout thing stuck in it. <laughs> We're going to need that uh, a little bit later on. Yeah. And into Shell Mound where we can finally turn this piece in. And that leaves just one more. And then Shay's solo part of Act 2 is complete. We can move on to Vela's solo part of Act 2 and then on to the joint finale. And then we are done. Hey, I got a radiation suit. Great. Hey, uh, what's up with all the feathers? Extra protection. Recent tech advancement. You don't say. Well, I have been asleep for a long time done. Thank you very much for watching this episode, you guys. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time for more Broken Age. Take care and goodbye.